for the next 30 minutes, Dr. Steve Bachenix, our guest. Then we'll go to Darlene, James, Eddie, Dennis, Terrence, and others that are patiently holding. Dr. Steve Pachinik, uh, headed up psychological warfare operations for the State Department, worked with the CIA, Pentagon, helped found Delta Force with General Boykin. He's been a frequent guest here over the years. He first came out and said that bin Laden was dead in 2002 on my show, later came out on CBS News, what he talked about at the American Hospital. He predicted they had him on ice when rolling him out somewhere in the future for political gain. Now Cy Hirsch has come out saying the entire bin Laden killing story was a fraud. And I've had Navy SEALs families on that died who were part of all that, saying it was a total fraud and it was a bin Laden double is what the SEALs have told them at that house. So it was a real firefight, but it was all staged. That's why they had to later kill most of that team that were witnesses to that. And court martial almost everybody on the ship that saw that nobody was dumped overboard. Uh, just all a total hoax. People say, well, if that happened, folks would talk. They did talk. So Pachenik's given us a lot of key intel. He co-wrote a bunch of books with Tom Clancy as well, produced Hollywood movies. I want to get into his view on what's happening with ISIS, IS, all these different operations around the world, what's happening with Russia right now. But, but Steve, here's my issue, Dr. Pachenik. He's also a medical doctor and a psychiatrist. Separate from, I get the geopolitical break up these countries, but who runs our country? Are people targeting the Tea Party? and targeting gun owners and setting up regular army for domestic operations and imploding the border and bringing in unlimited illegals and shutting down our power plants, I see the political elite energetically trying to sabotage this country and only promote uh, different combines that are part really of the Democratic Party in my view. And I know you're nonpartisan. I don't like the Republican leadership either. Politically, because you've been part of the CFR, you name it in the past, you resigned out of it. What, Council on Foreign Relations. What do you think of Obama and this political elite and what they're doing domestically so we can then move to the international level? Dr. Pachenik, thanks for joining us. Well, I think Obama is not a tutored individual in terms of domestic concerns. I think he has a staff that has not been performing very well. But to attribute a lot of nefarious deeds, and you know I've criticized Obama from the beginning with Dutan and Eric Holden and all that, I think we have to understand that there is a political elite, but it's really diverse. It goes from Silicon Valley to businessmen. It goes from the right wing to the left wing. So we're too big a country to be contained or suppressed. You know, I've said it from 9-11 that eventually the American public would understand what happened in 9-11. Bush and Cheney and the neocons would pay the price, and they are. We went from zero people understanding it to over 60% of the country in 13 years. Thanks to you, Alex, and the people in the alternative media, we got the truth out. The reality of the truth now is that FEMA is not as effective as they are. Obamacare is not going to work that effectively. A lot of the things that they've targeted has been overblown. But the reality of America is that we are very incredibly powerful as an entity. The people itself, we're diversified. We're located over a huge uh, geographic expanse. We're multivariate. We contain over 100 different ethnic groups. And so it's very hard to begin to understand that Washington is becoming less and less relevant. What's becoming more relevant domestically, and this is what the American public has to understand through the Alex Jones Show, is the governors. And the Congress understands this. That's why congressmen are leaving, senators are leaving, even big business is leaving, because they have to devolve their power to the state level. The states are becoming incredibly more powerful. If the American public wants to be effective, they have to work for their governors, their local commissioners, their ward captains. That's where politics has been going. And I'm not concerned about the federal government at the local level or domestic what I am concerned, and I think this is fair because everybody understood that I have criticized Obama domestically in foreign policy, but this fast weekend has been an amazing turnaround in the Obama administration where he has to receive credit, at least from somebody like me who's worked for both Republicans and Democrats. And what happened, even with the Malaysian airline and the war in Gaza by the Israelis, is that Obama quietly allied himself with Iran. Now, that's 35 years that I've been waiting since I was involved in the Iran hostage siege where Jimmy Carter lost it 
and we lost the embassy, we lost the Iranian influence. But in the meantime, Iran has been helping U.S. military forces for the past 10 years to assist us in Iraq and to assist us in Afghanistan. And more importantly, Iran has assisted us in evacuating from Iraq and Afghanistan. And quietly, Obama and the administration has recognized that fact and understand very well that Iran will be the dominant Middle Eastern power for the Shiites and Turkey will be the dominant uh, Middle East power for the Sunnis. Israel has become a strategic liability as General Petraeus said two years ago, and it's evidencing it now with Hamas, which is not a war of terror. It is a major invasion into Gaza, and they have a major problem with not only Hamas, which they, by the way, created 25 years ago. They funded it, and they have all the Palestinian operatives who are in their prison, and they know that they've doubled them up. But they also know that Hezbollah is in the north in Lebanon, also funded by Iran. Israel failed in their intelligence. They knew very well the intelligence that the arms were coming from Iran to Sudan, Sudan, Egypt, Egypt to Gaza. They waited. They had a year's worth of assessments on the tunnels. They knew the tunnels, but they didn't have a good assessment of the fighting capacity of Hamas, which turned out not to be terrorists, but insurgents who were fully armed, fully disciplined, extremely well organized, well armed, and Israel failed. And the reason it is failing is because every time an Israeli soldier dies, and this is not what I wish for, and I warn them, don't do this, it is equal to 30 American soldiers. So basically, 30 Israeli elite units of the Galani unit have died. That's 900 special forces American soldiers who have died in less than a week. That is not tenable for Israel. It's not tenable for the political legitimacy of the state, and Bibi has failed. He has failed in the same way historically that Moshe Dayan understood. You have to make concessions. Even his mentor, Sharon, who didn't like Bibi and detested him and was far a greater military hero, said, we have to pull out of Gaza. And in the same way that he failed when he invaded into Lebanon in 2006 and Hezbollah, with 800 soldiers, was able to decimate thousands of Israeli soldiers. Dr. Pachenik, can I just add a point here? You know, I'm neutral on this. I understand it's a very diverse tribal warfare situation over there, and there's a lot of vitriol on both sides. But when I see the kind of Benjamin Netanyahu uh, think tank groups attacking anybody, including Jews, who have any opinion on Israel outside of theirs, uh, it concerns me because I don't have any ill will towards Israel. Israel's not going anywhere, has upwards of 800 nuclear weapons, high tech. And as you know, uh, you know, the globalists are playing a double game with the Palestinians manipulating things for whatever strategy of tension. But when you start seeing Israeli professors in the news and Israelis cheering dead kids and, you know, saying, hey, let's rape Palestinian women, it's all, and, and these are real Israelis, not Palestinian operatives. If I was a Palestinian operative, I would pose as Jews and say these horrible things, losing a propaganda war. And that's what concerns me, because I don't want nuclear war. And Israel, more and more, the leadership is taking on a stubborn, obstinate, invincibility attitude of we'll do whatever we want. And it really concerns me. Correct. And the, and the issue that I said is that they have a problem that's basically from immaturity in terms of a country that never developed. I'm a Holocaust Jew. Bibi knows very well that those of us who died in the Holocaust, including the Warsaw Ghetto, would never were co-opted by Zionism. And I grew up in the Beitar unit under Zev Jabotinsky, Menachem Begin. This is not the state that was created in terms of Judaism. This is a state that was created by Ben-Gurion in terms of a state of concept called Zionism, which Abbas Hamas understands, the PLO understands, the British understand in America. What's happening now is Israel will lose its credibility as a Jewish state because most of the Jews in America and around the world will not accept the ignominious behavior of the Israelis continuously slaughtering innocent children and women. It's a repetition compulsion that they have been invested in. Now, let me put it in perspective. What you said is correct, Alex. Over the past 30 years, I was involved tangentially in taking down apartheid, but it was taken down by Bush and Baker quietly. So blacks in South Africa are in power. 
we were, I was involved directly in taking down the Soviet Union 30 years ago under Reagan and Baker and Bush. And what happened? We didn't fire a shot. And yet the Soviet Union became Russia, and Russia is growing. We were involved directly under the Bush-Reagan administration and even Carter in allowing China to become an economic force and transforming from communism to basically capitalism. Now, you're telling me in 60 years with the greatest brain power that allegedly we Jews have, we have not been able to get away from this incredible, immature, psychotic pattern of behavior that Israel has to continuously fight against PLO, Hamas, Hezbollah, or any anybody around them with this paranoid notion that they can't make peace. Yet we've been able, the United States and the Jews in America, as well as Christians and Muslims and others, have been able to uh, incorporate peace all over the world, but not with Israel. So Israel is headed towards self-destruction, and that's really what you're saying. But more importantly, what Israel understands is that as Obama moves to Iran, and by the way, Obama is not anti-Semitic because Rami Emanuel worked in the IDF and his father went into the Gordon Say Lumi. Rami Emanuel, Michelle's cousin, is an Orthodox Jewish rabbi, the first black one. So any notion that he's anti-Semitic is nonsense. But strategically and in terms of tactics, the CIA, our military intelligence, were very effective in making an alliance with Iran we will denuclearize their capability, making an alliance with Turkey, allowing Iraq to become what it should have been. And Biden, by the way, said it correctly years ago. It's a federalized country. That means we are taking apart, we, the United States of America, in its own power, is taking apart what the British and the French did in the Sykes-Picot Treaty of 1917, and that is we're taking apart Syria. Now you're going to have ISIS, which we have funded. That's part of al-Qaeda. And by the way, Bibi Netanyahu has funded uh, the Sunnis as well because he wants to get in there. And so every notion that Bibi is against terrorism is nonsense. Remember, he created Hamas. He's worked with the PLO. He's protected Arafat. And the Israelis have fought against Hezbollah, and now they make peace. So they have to come to peace. Now, the second part is, what countries have lost in all of this? Saudi Arabia, the creation of British intelligence, particularly Gertrude Bell and Lawrence of Arabia. And basically, this is Wahhabism, but it was never an effective country. Under the Suleimani Federation of Seven Sons, they have not been able to grow develop or develop has saudi arabia figured out that large power blocks in the west plan on breaking their country up well they figured it out and they're frightened and what they're doing is helping israel and basically encouraging israel to attack the plo because saudi arabia has never never cared about the palestinians even when i worked on the west bank and i went into the different uh palestinian uh, camps the yeah, Saudis always used it as a pawn. So the hypocrisy of Saudi Arabia and the hypocrisy of setting up al-Qaeda and Haqqani and funding all these right-wing extremist Sunni uh, uh, extremists is coming back to hurt Saudi Arabia. So we have effectively deflected entire al-Qaeda, Haqqani networks against the Saudi Arabian mach uh, machinery and royal house, which is really not an institution. And they will eventually devolve. They will be out of power because the eastern part of Saudi Arabia is run by the Shiites. And there, were, there are now conflicts there. And Saudi Arabia understands that it's sure. 40%. Sure. Couldn't we just see overnight a collapse of Riyadh one day and the princes yes. all in their big 777s running with all their loot yes. to Paris? Yes, they're all in Marbella. They have Swiss bank accounts. They're here in America. They're totally corrupt. They know it, we know it, the world knows it, but they're not a country. They were never a country. They were a centralized point of a very fundamentalist sect that didn't even really relate to the Quran, the Holy Quran, and they were called Wahhabis. And they claim they were the patrons or the guardians of Mecca Medina. All right, well, I get breaking up Iraq because it was always in three parts before, but, but, but here's my problem. Yes, sir. You don't use Islamic State, a bunch of crazies to do it who are blowing up all the churches. That, that I mean, that makes the West just proves it's like using the ring of Mordor. You cannot use the ring and have it turn into good. I, I agree with you. Now, the issue of Christianity is something I brought up on your show three years ago. And I have asked the Coptics to prepare for this. I'd asked the Geneva Convention of Churches to be aware of this. No one stood up to defend the Christians in Syria or anywhere else in the Middle East. And I helped to write a book called Out of the Ashes. 
with the last Tom Clancy book, 